All right. I have 431, so I'd like to go ahead and start. So far we have 20 people in the room. Welcome everybody. Hello, this is Financing Philadelphia's Future with Council Member Derek Green. This is a live question and answer session about creating a Philadelphia public bank. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your moderator, Vanessa Lowe. I co-chair the Economic Dignity Team for Power, Philadelphians organized to witness, empower, and rebuild. I also host a radio show on Germantown Community Radio called Vanessa's Money Hour. The way this works is you will be muted throughout, but we need your questions. That's the main thing. So you'll enter those in your chat or your Q&A, whichever platform you're on, um, by typing it into the chat or the uh, box there. And you should start that now. We're gathering the questions. Our hosts, Kyra Harris and Peter Winslow, will be gathering those questions and then um, asking them of our guests. Um, refer to the chat for any additional instructions and information. Note that um, you should use the speaker view. That way the person who's speaking will have the largest real estate on your, on your screen and then the others will still show on the side. All right? All right, welcome, welcome. So when you're submitting a question, please give us at least your first name and your neighborhood. We'd like to know where people are um, joining us from. And let us know if there's a particular person, whether it's Council Member Green or our guest who you're asking a question of. All right, we only have 30 minutes, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, let me introduce our, uh, the person who's responsible for this in collaboration, I should say, with the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition. Um, this is our fourth one of these. They happen every month. And, uh, you know, I think we're getting better every time. They're great. So Council Member Derek Green, he is serving a second term as City Council Member at large. Council Member Green has a background in banking and a deep commitment to sustainable economic development, particularly for Philly's black and brown neighbors um, and neighborhoods. He chairs the committees on finance and disabilities. His top legislative priority is the establishment of a Philadelphia public bank. And legislation was submitted to city council January 28th. Um, it is in front of city council. And um, we're, we use this forum each month to get updates on that. So we'll get an update in a moment. But let me introduce our guest this week. And that is Mary Rose Mertitas. She's the executive director of the recently established Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation. The PGCC is the Green Bank affiliate of the Philadelphia Energy Authority. It's, it's, and um, it works in support of the authority. Its mission is to drive a robust and equitable market for clean energy efficiency, storage, and generation in Philadelphia. They do this by connecting projects to public, private, and philanthropic capital. PGCC will use proven green bank tools to unlock capital for clean energy projects and will bring new financial products to the Philadelphia region's clean energy economy. With that, I turn it over to Council Member Green. Well, thank you, Ms. Vanessa. I should call you the, the mistress of finance and public banking. Uh, you do a great job with your soothing and calm voice that must come from your background on uh, G-Town Radio. But it's a pleasure to be with all of you again um, for this conversation. I'm really excited to have uh, Mary Rose with us um, to talk about the, the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation. Um, you know, one of the things we've talked about regarding the public banking um, initiative is how we can provide access to credit for uh, small businesses in our city, especially those in our black and brown communities. But also I think the benefit of a public bank can also provide opportunities to provide resources for hard to lend to entities like co-ops. And we've talked about, you know, PAC and the Philadelphia Area Cooperative Alliance in the past, but also emerging areas of technology um, and alternative energy. Uh, and that's why I think it's a great opportunity to partner and have this conversation with Mary Rose about what's happening through this new entity, which is a an affiliate of the Philadelphia Energy Authority. Um, in reference to the public bank work that we've been doing, uh, we've since retained Holland and Knight. And so we've been meeting with Holland and Knight. We had a conversation um, just yesterday with 
um, advocates, many from um, the Philadelphia Public Bank Coalition, and we're continuing to broaden the conversation. And now we're really getting into some of the meat of the legal work in reference to how we can make this initiative here in the city of Philadelphia uh, very vibrant and really help to fulfill its mission. But I think the opportunity to partner with great organizations like uh, the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation is a great opportunity to expand um, the work of the public bank, uh, especially for those um, other perspectives that we have not talked about as much, but are definitely very vital to uh, this initiative, especially in reference to alternative energy. And the Philadelphia Energy Authority has done a lot of great work in that regard. And I look forward to an ongoing partnership uh, with Mary Rose and her team. Mary Rose, while we have some questions get teed up, I've seen a couple come across. Why don't you give us some opening words? And, and please do mention, because I didn't give you much of a bio, your very interesting internship that you had. Ah, yes. Um, well, thank you all uh, so much. Council Member Green, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Vanessa, thank you, and the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition, thank you all for the chance to talk to you. Um, so my name is Mary Rose Martinez. Um, as Vanessa said, I am the uh, executive director of the Philadelphia Green Capital Corp, which is the Green Bank affiliate of the Philadelphia Energy Authority. Um, the Philadelphia Energy Authority is a municipal authority created by city council um, to promote and grow um, and support the clean energy um, and energy efficiency markets here in Philadelphia. Um, and we really see energy as a tool for impact um, across a number of different sectors. So we work on commercial, residential, and institutional and municipal projects. Um, and our Green Bank affiliate, the uh, Philadelphia Green Capital Corp will, will do the same. Um, because you kind of teed me up, I'll, I'll go to my bio for a second, Vanessa. So I joined the Philadelphia Energy Authority um, almost two years ago and have been working on the CPACE program, which is a, um, a financing tool for commercial buildings to use for energy efficiency and, and renewable energy projects. Um, prior to that, I was working in renewable energy finance and M&A for a number of years. Um, and um, 10 years ago, actually, I interned in the Obama White House, um, which is, I guess, what you're probably teeing me up for, Vanessa, um, um, actually in um, now President Biden's domestic policy team and in his chief of staff's office, um, which was a wonderful internship and um, some of the most exciting six months of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thanks. Jump ahead, Kyra, do we have Kyra or um, uh, Peter, do we have any questions yet that you'd like to put out there? Uh, yes, um, we have a question from Dan Hoffman, um, uh, essentially asking whether, uh, asking uh, uh, Mary Rose whether it would be most beneficial to have uh, another low cost lender or whether we might be better off with a loan guarantee entity that works with existing lenders, nonprofits, and for profits. Uh, or a new equity partner, uh, mm -hmm. where you and the partner can buy out each other's interest on prearranged terms? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's such a great question. So I barely even got into what we're going to be doing as a green bank. Um, but one of the um, you know, main philosophies of green banks is to crowd in capital, not crowd out. Um, so if there's a place in the market for a new low cost lender to come in, and because that lender, our, our green bank, which you know, I want to actually just say, you know, Green Bank is kind of an energy industry term, but it's not formally a bank. So it's it's a very different type of organizational structure than what we're talking about here with a public bank or with kind of commercial banks that some people may be familiar with. Um, but I'll kind of casually use the term Green Bank to refer to our specialty financing entity that is designed to create, um, to grow markets for energies, for energy products and energy programs. Um, so Philadelphia Green Capital Corp, the Green Bank, um, our goal, goal will be to crowd in capital, to bring private capital, to bring public capital and philanthropic capital to the table to help get these um, projects financed. And if that means that we're providing credit enhancements or loan loss reserves or payment guarantees, um, we're completely, uh, we want to provide the tool that allows um, for other financing institutions to be able to, to scale these programs and products on the energy efficiency side and the solar side and with other technologies um, throughout the market. So it's a very fair question. I think one of the things about green banks is that they are very nimble in the number of tools that they can use. And we plan to use a number um, of kind of best practices from green banks across the country. 
a follow-up question, but I want to make space for Kyra, who I think also had a question. Kyra, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a question from the first one I see is from Jim from the Graduate Hospital area. Is there a possibility for the $1.4 billion from the Biden administration um, or, or the American Rescue Plan to provide some funds to capitalize a public bank? And Jim, that's a, a great question. Um, under the American Rescue Plan, uh, we will receive as a city $700 million this year and another $700 million next year. All of those dollars from the American Rescue Plan must be spent by December 31st, 2024. Uh, one of the things that we're starting to really dive into uh, with Holland and Knight as our outside counsel is trying to identify what's the amount of money that we would need to really capitalize uh, the public bank for the goals that we're trying to achieve. Uh, so we're working on that as we speak. And I think there's gonna be some opportunities as we go through uh, the budget process um, this year, um, as well as going into next year, um, because we can always look to do a possible transfer ordinance. Uh, and then we also have next year's budget process to really identify what's the best source of funds to capitalize a public bank. All right, well, Tia put another a couple of questions, but I'm going to follow up on how you were describing what PGCC would do. Um, I'm actually involved with a, I work for a federal agency that has funded a project in Puerto Rico to try to spread solar energy as a concept. Hmm. One of the key components that they're sort of doing besides actually sort of installing microgrids so that, you know, it can start happening, is they're having to educate the financial community. And I would assume maybe not to the same extent, but is that also going to be a piece of it? Because kind of like with cooperatives, banks know certain products. They know mortgages. They know, you know, homes for uh, loans for small business. But green energy is not really a product yet, is it? Talk to us a little bit about that. That's a great question, Vanessa. And that's actually something that um, that we do anticipate having to do um, with a number of capital partners that we are currently talking to and plan to work with in the future. Um, it's because a lot of commercial entities are used to financing products that they already know. So they know how to underwrite a home mortgage. They know how to underwrite um, a home equity loan, um, but they don't know how to underwrite an energy efficiency project. And so they don't know how to project the energy savings associated with the project and match that to, to the risk of the cash flow. And so that's a role that the Green Bank can come in and, and play. You know, first we can come in and say, hey, we know how to underwrite these programs. We can provide low cost loans because we understand the risk and we, we, we see it as much lower risk than other parties may. And we can partner with commercial entities to help them start to underwrite um, similar programs to, to open up the market to more and more participants. Um, so that's definitely a component to it. Great. Thank you and for Vanessa, that. if I could follow up on that, one of the reasons why I think Mary Rose is really great for this opportunity with uh, the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation because of her work on CPACE, which is a way of getting you know, commercial buildings to do more sustainable things, um, to make their buildings less, um, more sustainable and using less um, you know, fossil fuels and greenhouse gas emissions and also start to look at other types of alternative ways of energy uh, like solar. Uh, the Energy Authority has done a lot of work in this space to help more residents get access to um, these new technologies like solar and making their homes more sustainable. And that's kind of similar to what we're trying to do with the public bank trying to find ways to make it easier for those entities that are not able to get access to credit, like some of our black and brown businesses or our cooperatives or affordable housing developers or those who want to be in alternative energy space um, like solar. So I think this is a great opportunity and a great potential partnership between what we're trying to do at the public bank and the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation. Great, great. Kyra, let's go to you first. Do you have a question? Hearing nothing, I'll go over there. Sorry, to I was muted. Apologize for that. Um, Connie, I don't know if your question was answered given the last few remarks, but uh, her initial question was, how does a green bank differ from a public bank? Connie, was your question answered or do you need a little bit more uh, elaboration on that? Much answered, but it's probably a little bit different about how, the, how it's governed. I think they're different 
and maybe differences in that. And not only differences in government, but how the uh, the the Philadelphia Green Capital Corp and a Philadelphia Public Bank could work together. What are the ways that they could work together uh, to achieve the goals that uh, they have in common? Sure. Um, I can jump in and kind of start mm -hmm. if that's okay. Um, so how is a green bank different from a public bank? That's a great question. Um, and they're actually really fundamentally different entities. So a green bank is really uh, a mission-driven specialty finance institution that uses innovative financing tools like credit enhancements, loan loss reserves, or, or loans or equity investments too, um, to kind of accelerate the transition to clean energy, support renewable energy projects, support energy efficiency projects, um, which I know is in line with what the public bank plans to be doing as well. Um, green banks are really much more of, of um, financing platforms as opposed to true banks, which are depository institutions and come with um, more governance and, um, uh, and, and more authorities, I would say. Um, council member? Yeah, I can um, definitely see how we're very similar in a lot of ways in the reference to just really trying to make um, challenging situations more feasible. Um, so, you know, Mayor Rose gave a you know, good perspective on the Green Bank. Uh, from a public bank, we have a broader scope, but also I see um, a lot of great opportunities where we can bring in some of the resources and some of the things that we're doing um, that's a little bit different than um, a Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation, which is a green bank uh, and partner uh, in those regards. So I think there's some great opportunities for collaboration. We're also both in our infancy in reference to creating um, these two institutions. And I know from the, my experience of working with Mary Rose and just my experience with the Philadelphia Energy Authority and its leadership, um, there'll be great opportunities um, going forward uh, for both entities to work together, especially as we're focusing on trying to promote more um, green energy projects that can really benefit the city of Philadelphia, both our constituents and our companies as well. Great. Um, Peter, I'm gonna take it to you in a moment, but I wanna sort of take a question because I'm not seeing any more in our chat, but we're on a couple of different platforms. So there may be questions coming in from elsewhere. Um, so Mary Rose, maybe if we get a little bit of a lull, I'd love to hear, um, and I think other folks would love to hear about a prominent um, green energy program that has been financed and already exists in the city of Philadelphia. That might give people some concept of what we're sort of talking about and why it's so necessary to bring that to our community. Um, but let's go back to Peter. Do you have a question? Oh, I have a question for uh, Mary Rose. Uh, from what I understand, you're anticipating having some uh, very innovative financing methods like uh, being able to um, acquire SREX in advance and things of that nature. Could you talk to that? Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's exactly how I was going to answer Vanessa's question. So thank you. Um, so a prominent uh, program that we currently have is um, actually the Solarize program, which PEA runs and has been running for a number of years. It's actually the largest Solarize program in the country. Um, and we're really proud of it. And it's been... Um, most many, many ways due to the support of Council Member Green. So thank you very much um, for all of your support on the program. Um, Solarize is essentially a, um, a rooftop solar origination program where PEA um, helps residents and commercial entities um, uh, get connected to installers and install solar on their roofs. So we've installed um, hundreds and hundreds of systems uh, to date through that program. And um, as part of that program, we kind of we have a special set of funds set aside for a low and moderate income solar program, um, and we're currently uh, finishing up or midway through the installations for our LMI solar program pilot right now. The first 50 homes to receive uh, solar installations through this special fund, um, and the way that we were able to kind of um, use green bank tools to create this LMI solar program, it's kind of threefold. Uh, first, we have low cost, low interest homeowner loans um, that are kind of sized to the homeowner's utility bill to ensure that they are receiving monthly savings compared to their previous utility bill um, when they're looking at what their new usage will be and this loan payment. Um, so everybody's guaranteed to receive or everybody's targeting to receive 20% savings from the beginning of the program based on the size of their low cost loan. Um, second, 
is um, we actually were able to subsidize the upfront cost of installing the solar by pre-purchasing the SRECs, which are solar renewable energy credits, which are um, renewable energy attributes that are created uh, for every megawatt hour of solar produced by a solar array. So essentially it's the green energy attribute produced by solar. Um, and you can buy and sell these credits on the open market and we pre-purchase them in order to buy down the cost um, for uh, the installations. And then there was also an installer incentive payment um, that came from the Solarize funds to help also buy down the upfront cost um, and make the program work. So um, this is a really great example of a program that we, in which we used low cost homeowner loans, which came along with a loan loss reserve to help use alternative underwriting. Um, the underwriting was not based on FICO scores as many home loans are. Uh, it was based on utility bill repayment history. Um, so that kind of opens up the loan program to more participants. Um, and then we use SREC pre-purchases to also buy down the cost. And we plan to sell the SRECs in the future and use the funds to subsidize future LMI solar rounds. And, and, wow. just, to, and just to follow up on what Mary Rose said, um, something that was kind of hidden in her conversation is that those solar installations that they've been able to help facilitate through those green bank initiatives um, that they've been doing to the Philadelphia Energy Authority and now going forward with the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation, that's helped provide real jobs here in the city of Philadelphia. It provides opportunity for young people um, from communities of color to learn to not only install solar panels on residential homes, but start to grow in the industry here in the city of Philadelphia, not only for their ability to learn that trade and craft, but also have the opportunity to start their own business uh, and, and hire more people, just like through the public bank where we're providing access to credit to help small business to grow, to be able to hire more people in our communities around the city of Philadelphia. The, the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation is doing that. Um, we'll be able to do that going forward through their ability to help finance these solar projects that can help people have more sustainable homes, but also provide employment opportunities for young people in our city. Great. Kyra, coming to you next, but I want to ask, I don't want to miss an opportunity for people who may be listening and say, well, I want solar panels on my house. Is <laughs> SolarRise still available? And is there a referral or a website that they can go to to learn more? Yes, we're actually going to be launching phase five of the SolarRise program this summer. Um, so stay tuned. I will be sure to share it with the organizers of this event so they can share it with the, the mailing list. Um, and we would love to talk to you about how to install solar on your homes or businesses. Wonderful. All right, Kyra, next question from your side. Okay, so um, in addition to solar, what other kinds of projects is the Green Bank hoping to finance? Mm -hmm. um, in addition to solar, uh, definitely energy efficiency projects. Um, actually, we plan to launch publicly and kind of do a big rollout of the organization this summer. And when we launch, we'll be um, highlighting our first four products. And two of them are, um, one of them is a pre-dev loan and one of them is a term loan, both for nonprofits and multifamily buildings looking to do energy efficiency projects. Um, you can also use these loans for renewable energy projects, but primarily the use is energy efficiency and water conservation. Um, and so, uh, those are other things we'll be supporting. We also, over time, anticipate supporting other technologies um, and potentially getting into the electric vehicle infrastructure space and um, potentially into the green stormwater space, but it will depend on uh, what the market demand is and what the opportunity is as we kind of grow. All right, thank you. Peter, do you have a question? Uh, yes, as uh, everybody knows, uh, Council Member Green wears lots of hats, including the chairman of the uh, uh, Public <coughs> of Philadelphia Gas Commission. Um, and in the discussion about diversification and the potential transition of the of <coughs> UW, there's been a lot of discussion about geothermal systems and especially uh, local network uh, geothermal systems. Uh, is that something that the of Green Capital Corp would be uh, involved in as well? Um, it certainly could be. Uh, we currently at the Philadelphia Energy Authority is currently the CPACE program administrator and CPACE is a financing tool that can be used currently um, to pay for geothermal systems. Um, <laughs> and in the event that there are not 
uh, capital providers who want to come to the table. You know, we don't want to crowd anyone out. If we can crowd them in, great. Um, but in the event that 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 that's that the the capital's not there, it's certainly a role that the uh, Philadelphia Green Capital Corp could be playing to help get those projects over the finish line. And just to follow up on that conversation, and I'm going to switch hats here. Um, so I put on my. Um, gas Commission had, you know, one of the things that we have been doing to the Gas Commission um, is that we've been doing a diversification study uh, that was you know, funded by the American City Climate Change Challenge. Uh, and we recently had a town hall meeting um, through the Gas Commission to have people come and offer their thoughts on diversification. Um, one of the ideas um, that we've heard in reference to geothermal, um, which Peter just talked about, you know, there's some opportunities and we're looking at the American Jobs Plan that President Biden um, discussed as uh, in reference to infrastructure on a more traditional sense. And could that be an opportunity for some type of demonstration, a pilot? You know, the legislation has not been passed, um, but that's definitely something I've been thinking about for diversification of um, fossil fuels, you know, and PGW and transitioning um, from what has been using as an energy source to a different type of energy source going forward. Uh, and there has been some models. Uh, I know some of the people on this call are familiar with um, National Grid, which owns Boston Gas, which did do a geothermal district um, in Boston working with United Steelworkers. Um, so that's a great opportunity for that. And just one other point regarding the American Jobs Plan, uh, that infrastructure um, has some real opportunities for both the public bank to be engaged in, uh, as we talked about providing access to credit, not so much direct loans, but more letters of credit and other type of credit enhancements to small businesses and hard to lend to entities, but also working with entities like uh, the Energy Authority or the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation on electric vehicle infrastructure, um, because something that's going to be discussed coming out of uh, President Biden's American Jobs Plan. He's talked quite a bit about electric vehicles and infrastructure. And I definitely could see a role for both the public bank and possibly the Green Capital Corporation of being involved in that because we've got to figure out how we provide charging stations um, in um, our city, in our region. Would that be on street charging? Would it be um, charging at private parking lots or public parking lots? and a whole host of opportunities. And once that legislation is start, moves through Congress and we get a sense of some of the details, um, that could be a real opportunity for that ongoing partnership between these two entities. And here we are already at 4.58. So we've got two minutes. I'll have maybe sort of some closing words from Mary Rose and then Council Member Green. Sure. Um, wow, that really flew by. Thank you it all does. so much for your time. Um, I guess, you know, to close out, what I wanted to say is um, we will, you know, we will be launching the uh, Philadelphia Green Capital Corp, you know, publicly with um, some announcements this coming summer. So please stay tuned. I will be sure to share that information with your coalition. Um, and thank you again to Council Member Green. Uh, you're a real champion for all of the clean energy uh, work that we do at PEA and at PGCC. Um, so thank you all for your time. Thank you, Council Member Green. Uh, I just think it's a great um, to have this conversation. I want to thank Mary Rose um, for being able to be on with us today to share some of the insight. I mean, I am privy to a lot of conversations because I feel like I talk to people at the Energy Authority all the time on different ideas, and I always have crazy kind of interesting perspectives on how we can do things and be creative, and I'm sending emails to Emily and, and Mary Rose, so I'm glad that other people have an opportunity to hear some of the real creative things that are happening here in the city um, to really help us do things in a more sustainable, clean energy perspective as we move forward and move our city forward. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next month. It's always the last Tuesday of the month, 4.30 to 5. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.